Hello everyone, my name is Jessica, and over quite some period of time, I've had the opportunity to experiment with different mediums, different styles, create paintings, and today, I want to share with you guys my favorite art supplies. I'll touch on all the mediums that I enjoy using, show you some demos, and show you my art as well. This video is not sponsored by any of the brands that I mention, I just simply want to share my favorite tools that I gravitate towards after so many years of experimenting. And with all that being said, let's just jump right in. The regular graphite pencils that I like to use are the Koinor Hard Muth, the Palomino Blackwing, and the Stedler Mars Lumograph. The Koinor pencil is just a great overall graphite pencil. I'm able to get a really nice gradient even when I'm just using the HB pencil. And I personally just really like this brand. I also really love the Stedler Mars Lumograph to sketch, especially with the hard pencil. And these both come in different leads to give you a variety when you're drawing. And my favorite, favorite pencil is the Palomino Blackwing. It is a gorgeous, most incredible pencil that I have used. It was suggested to me by a professor. And honestly, guys, you can get so much variety with this pencil. It does a beautiful dark shading. And you can also vary your lines and shading with some lighter strokes. So it's basically like the whole set of the graphite pencils in one. I really enjoy using this pencil to draw out all my characters for my illustrations and it's just a really nice high grade pencil to use. This pencil is awesome for building up value, creating texture, and I really do believe it changed the drawing game completely. I love Blackwing. I also enjoy these colored pencils to sketch out some of my drawings. And they are the Cole Erase pencils by Prismacolor. And I also really like the Stedler watercolor pencils as well. I swatched out my favorite colors for you guys. And these pencils really give a nice flair and style to your work. I love starting out with them because they are erasable. They do draw lighter. And I can also go back in and build up with my graphite pencil on top. I like to use this method in my sketchbook when I'm developing my characters. And sometimes I even just use them on their own. But overall, I think they create a nice base layer for your sketches and are a great way to organize your initial thoughts. Now let's talk about my favorite colored pencils. I use the Prismacolor Premier colored pencils and these are the only colored pencils that I've ever used. Literally for the past 10 years, I have built up my collection and I store them in these organizers. And since I have the 150 pack, this is a great way to keep them together and color organized so that it's easy to reach whenever I need. I love these pencils so much that I haven't even tried any other brands. Even though I did hear some good things about the Polychromos, which I might try soon, these did a great job with vibrancy. They're super creamy and blendable. And overall, just a really great colored pencil for all levels. I use them to draw these on my YouTube channel, and they're great for toned paper. That's all for all my regular pencils, and now let's talk about some sharpeners. This first sharpener by Coombe hasn't failed me yet. The blade does not get dull, and it's suitable for both colored pencils and graphite. This Credicolor Mega Duo sharpener has the same exact concept, but just has a compartment to keep your shavings. And last but not least, the cutest sharpener of them all is the Muji Portable Pencil Sharpener. It's quite tiny, but I really love it, especially for when I go sketching on the go. Now, let's talk about my favorite mechanical pencils. I really don't use anything too fancy, but here are the ones that I find myself using the most. The Pentel P225 and the 0.5mm lead is great. I really love Bic, I swear by them. They're, this is the 0.7 millimeter number two pencil. Also, I love the Papermate Clear Point and also the 0.7 millimeter. And last but not least, the Bic Velocity 0.9. If I want a really thick line, I will use this one. And I love all of these very much. I mostly use these to draw in my sketchbook. I love using them for line work. And I see myself using them all the time when I go sketching outside. It's really all about personal preference and what you enjoy using. 
Now, another essential tool that I love to use are my blending stumps. And this is the number eight, and I love to use these to smudge. Now, let me show you guys how it works. You can basically smudge all of your pencils that you do, and I like to use this as a base for my drawings. And then I go back in with my pencils to add some values. I can then go back and forth with some smudging. And once I have those layers, I like to erase my highlights, which brings me to the next point of my favorite erasers. I absolutely love the Tombow Mono Zero erasers. They come in two different shapes and I'm able to really get a precise little highlight whenever I'm drawing my characters. I highly recommend this if you love to do little details. And a great alternative to using white pencils is to just erase your highlights out. They feel just as if you're drawing with a pencil, you're just actually erasing. And I especially love them for the highlights of the hair. Now another huge essential is my kneadable eraser. And this is what it looks like when it's new. And this eraser is great to pick up values, especially when they're smudged. It gives it a very soft glow. And there are absolutely no eraser shavings when you use this eraser. This is great when you just want to softly lighten any area. Now, if I really want to get rid of something, I use my Milan 428 synthetic rubber eraser. And this is great to just get rid of anything that you do not want on your paper anymore. That's all for the dry media, but now it's time to talk pens. Believe it or not, I use a simple big round stick medium point ballpoint pen to draw up my portraits and sketches whenever I go anywhere. Ballpoint pens have helped me gain confidence to draw without pencils, and I love to mix media with them as well. Up next, I really love the Muji gel ink ballpoint pens. Most of these that I'm mentioning are stationary, but I love, love, love them to draw. Especially these pens, I take them everywhere I go, literally. And I'm telling you guys, the precision on these pens are incredible. One of my favorite colors to sketch with is this navy blue color. And just in case you're wondering, they come in all different colors as well. I had these in my pencil case at all times when I went sketching in Italy, which you might have seen this spread in my sketchbook tour. But here's how these colors look up close. I find them great to sketch with and overall an amazing pen to have. My favorite fountain pen is by Lamy. It has a fine point that looks something like this. And you can open its body compartment to fill up with your own ink, or you can use their default inks that they sell as well, and they're available in different colors. I really do like both, but the reason why I chose to refill my own is to have some waterproof ink. And one that I used that I found worked well is the Platinum Carbon Ink in Black. This is what I currently use and I love doing doodles with them. I love the line that this pen makes. And sometimes I just carry this pen with me whenever I go sketching. Now for even more precision, I do love to use the Pilot GTEC C4 as well as the Pentel Hybrid Technica. These have a super fine point and they're great for sketching as well. With these two pens, you can get a really thin line, and I personally love the brown ink in this pen specifically, so that's why I have one for brown and one for black. Again, they're really great for some ink doodles, and sometimes I feel like I'm actually drawing with a pencil. I also find these very similar to the Muji's, so they're a great alternative as well. Okay, now for my liners and ones that I've used for forever, I love the Microns and the Stedler's Pigment Liners. Both come in different sizes of points and are waterproof. They're great for line work and I use them especially with watercolors. Now my favorite brush pens would be the Kuretake No. 8 Fountain Brush Pen and the Pentel Pocket. I use these to shade in really black areas and I love to use them for dry brush as well. All of the pens that I've mentioned I use to do my Inktober sketches and are basically my essential ink tools for my sketchbooks. Now, talking about sketchbooks, one factor that I really look for is paper that can take all mediums. So the ones that I'll be mentioning have done just that. 
I took this sketchbook with me to Italy. It's by Stillman and Byrne. It's their beta series. I love this one in particular because it opens flat. The pages are white and super durable. And I found that it was great for wet mediums such as watercolor. It holds ink beautifully and worked great for pencils too. The next sketchbook and one that I recently finished and filmed for you guys is the Leustrom 1917 sketchbook in the A5 size. I got this sketchbook to experiment and ended up really loving it since it held up beautifully with all my mediums and was a great compact size. The next sketchbook brand that was my favorite for the longest time, and it still is, is the Moleskin watercolor sketchbook. I have tried all of Moleskin sketchbooks and I like this one because of the landscape opening which I can use to paint long panoramic views and I have to say it holds every medium excellently. The paper has a nice texture, it's not too thin and it's not too thick. I like to use this one when I go out sketching or painting. When I first started keeping sketchbooks, I used to only buy the Moleskin art sketchbooks. I recommend them to everyone and they're awesome. And one more last sketchbook that I want to mention that is a larger size, which is the one that I'm currently using by Jane Davenport. And I was initially caught by this sketchbook because it had a canvas hardcover that I can paint myself, which stay tuned for that. This is the sketchbook that I did my 100 heads in and it holds all my mediums beautifully. Now let's talk about the separate paper pads. I really love the Strathmore Tone Mixed Media Paper. I have painted these acrylic paintings on this paper and it is amazing. I found that it holds all paint mediums beautifully since the paper is thicker. And you can find the paperweight in the front cover and this is the 184 pound paper. Strathmore also makes these in gray, which I love just as much. They also make paper that's thinner that I like to use for my sketches. And just generally speaking, my top two brands that I always go to for paper are Canson and Strathmore. Now for watercolor paper, I really love the Arches watercolor pad that is 140 pounds paper and it has a beautiful texture. I also used hot pressed, but if you guys prefer the texture, go with the cold pressed. Now I also really love the Fabriano Artistico paper. I used the 300 pound paper, so it's extra thick. So both of these are really great high grain paper. Before I talk to you guys about my paints, I want to mention my favorite white tools. I use these anytime I need to make highlights or sometimes I just flat out draw with them on toned paper. These right here are the best for whites and I love the Uniball Signa gel pen. For those of you who are wondering, this is a General's pencil extension. You can actually insert any pencil and get the most out of it and you just secure it in and can keep drawing. This is also a General's white pastel pencil and I love it very much. So these pencils are really good if you're having any dark paper that you wanna draw on. I like to use the gel pen for highlights. Here's how it looks. The white Prismacolor pencil I found to be extremely creamy and the pastel pencil is great for some textures. I love using this gel pen as a little touch of sparkle to my character's eyes. Okay, so let's talk about paints. So up first are my watercolors. I recently decided to try the Daniel Smith's watercolors and I honestly fell in love with them. I made my own palette, I swatched them out and I put them together in this Medine watercolor uh, tin box that I found on Amazon, which I'll have everything linked below. I love these paints, they are super vibrant, super colorful, and I honestly find myself wanting to use them the most. Some other watercolor essentials I use are the Faber-Castell Click and Go Water Cup. I love this thing, it's amazing, it holds water perfectly, especially when I go painting outdoors. I really recommend this, it even holds the brush on those wiggly edges at the top. And another little yet essential tool that I love to use is my water dropper, which helps me hydrate my paints before I begin painting. And I just put one or two drops onto my paints to make sure that they have reactivated before I start. Both this palette and paints work together in the little pans that I filled myself. So if you guys are wondering if you should try this, I definitely recommend. 
When it comes to watercolors, I find myself gravitating towards a company when I find that their color is really what I want. And there are many different brands that I see myself getting just because I wanted a specific color. But I have to say that the Daniel Smiths did a great job with the color. I created all of my paintings from Italy with these paints and I felt that their vibrancy and quality were fantastic. And by the way, I purchased the tubes separately and made a palette that I feel would work best for me. I also wanted to mention a brand, the Koh-i-Noor watercolors, which are super affordable and I love these paints to paint with as well. They come in this stacked wheel that you can untwist and you really can't beat this quality for this price. I throw these in my art bag when I go sketching outside because they're super compact and great to use. These are great for beginners as well as intermediate levels, so if you haven't tried these yet, I highly, highly recommend these paints. Okay, so let's talk about my watercolor brushes. My current favorite brands are Creative Mark, the Black Velvet Silver, and the Paul Rubens E-Spirit. The Mimic Kalinske Creative Mark brush is an overall incredible brush. I use it for all my watercolors. The Paul Rubens E-Spirit 818 is a great mop brush and it covers large areas. It also comes to a point. Now the Silver Black Velvet brushes are super, super great for details. They can honestly make these thin lines since it comes to a nice point as well. Up next, I'm gonna talk to you guys about my favorite gouache paints. I honestly do mix gouache and watercolor when I'm painting, but overall I like the Holbein Acrylic Gouache. They do have a thicker consistency and I'm able to make more opaque paintings. And my other go-to brands are the Windsor Newton Designer Gouache as well as the Schmincke brand. I found this to be the best paints that I have used and I also found that the number 4 Utrecht Sablet 228 brush is the only brush that I need to create gouache paintings. I use these paints and this brush in my speed painting videos and I have been using them since. Here's a painting I did on the balcony a few days ago with my gouache and watercolor paints. As far as palettes go, any plastic palette will do. I have one that I actually fill my paints up and one that I use to put out fresh paint. I simply just put out the fresh paint on my palette before I begin painting. And I also have another palette that I have used in other paintings that I keep refilling and reusing. I actually used that palette to create my fox painting. If you guys haven't checked it out, you can see it on my Instagram. When I'm painting any portrait or any sketch in gouache or watercolor, I start with a tone and I build my colors up. Here I'm only using red, orange, and yellow, and I'm starting off light and developing my shadows as I go on. Practicing with a limited color palette gives you really great control with your values. Alright, now let's talk about the acrylic paints that I use. My favorite two brands for acrylic are Golden, I use their fluids and their regular tubes, and I also love the Nova Color acrylic paint as well. Both are my favorite because of their high quality. Now, along with these paints to make them more blendable, I use the Matte Medium by Golden as well. And I also love these little containers that I can premix my paint in. Super, super convenient. You can get them at any dollar store. And I use the Golden Polymer Varnish to seal my paintings. These are the materials that I used in my skateboard video, the acrylics, as well as the varnish. They held up great and were fun to use. Now let's discuss my favorite acrylic brushes. So I really like the Simply Simmons brush as well as the Grace Art. And the Princeton Art and Brush Co. are the best brushes that I have found for the best price. I have them in a bunch of packs, I restock them, and since they're super cheap, I just reuse them. For my palette, I really enjoy the Grey Matters Paper Palette. I prefer the grey because I can see the value that I mix onto my palette. It's just a plasticky texture and holds your paint well and once you're done you can just toss it and your mess is basically clean. And last but not least, I'll talk to you guys about my favorite oil paints. I use the Winsor & Newton Artist Oil Color paint and I purchased the large white because I use it the most and I also like the Gamblin as well. So these are my two favorite brands. An essential that I use is the paper palette as well and I do prefer actually painting on the glass palette. I have my palette knives to mix my paint 
And I use Gamsol by Gamblin for when I need to clean my brush from a color. For my oil painting medium, I use the Neo Magilp by Gamblin as well, and I find that it's a great medium for blending. For my brushes, I really like the Creative Mark Black Swine and the Ebony Splendor. When it comes to the surfaces that I like to paint on, I do my sketches on canvas paper, and I also paint in my moleskin sketchbooks. I actually found them to hold oil paint excellently. Now another surface that I used in college for school is the Crescent Illustration Board, and the thicker one is always better, but I found that the Illustration Board holds all mediums and you can create finished pieces on it too. For when I want to make larger pieces, I use Canvas. Honestly, I use the Michaels brand. I find them to work really well and I love their sales. But I have to say my most favorite surface to work on is the Ampersand Gesso Board. I'm able to get so much detail on it and I love that it comes pre-gessoed, although I do sand it and prime it myself as well. I painted this portrait on the gesso board, it's 12 by 12, and I also recently painted this pelican on a larger cardboard. I love the cradled 3 fourths, it's perfect for me, and when I prime my surfaces, I use this large artist loft brush and the Liquitex acrylic gesso. I've tried other gesso brands and I find this one to be my favorite. And that is it guys, we have reached the end. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if there's any supply that you'd like me to go in depth about, comment below. And remember that these are just my personal favorite supplies. You do not need all of these to create. You really just need a pencil and a paper. But I do hope that this video helped you and I really hope you keep creating. I'll see you guys in the next one, bye.